going Hello. on? Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> hey, uh, welcome to the outdoor version of Ra- uh, Red River Podcast. We're uh, check, check. hanging out in lovely Mattituck. Uh, I'm soaking in the, the sun, hanging out uh, in the backyard with uh, Parker Langan. I wish I had some sunblock. And uh, it's going down. <laughs> it's going down. Um, and then uh, Mr. Jeff Fab from... Man, should I should I list all the bands? Mm, well, yeah, or and Diane, oh, we got Diane, 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 Diane. Di- yep. welcome Jeff, Diane, Jeff's mom, mom. Dukes. Oh, I, uh, she's she's heard it all. Oh yeah, I got it. She just yeah. And I, I just I want to make a good impression. <laughs> she's heard it all, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you, Jeff, for doing this. Uh, I know that you you've been friends with our buddy here, Langan, forever. A little too long. Uh, it's been a, little, a, while, a little it's bit. been a, it's been a little too long. Yeah, about a year too long. <laughs> we kind of hit that mark. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you know, we come together every once in a while. We yeah. act nice. We Dad. do. All right, Put on cool. a good show. And and uh, so, what are you doing back back home? Like, just uh, I know you were in what out I've west. I've been swimming and. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Visit. And what else have I been doing, Mom? Not much. Visiting. Just kind of hanging mom? out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just hanging out oh, out here. Cool. Being the good son. <laughs> yeah. My mom and I, we do our daily routines. You know, we keep it light. We hang. <laughs> where were you staying? Uh, uh, where, where'd you come from? I, I know you were like out west, right? Or Portland? I was. Or? I was in. I was in uh, Washington for a little bit, and then uh, I was in. Um, I was in California for a little bit before that. All right. So that, I mean, that's yeah. pretty. Yeah. Yeah. You get to do He's a little a jet bit. Setter, of, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So. Yeah. So I love being here, especially at this time of time of year. It's you're a summer guy, right? I love it. You guys uh, hate it. Yeah. You man, can't wait we, for it to be over. Kinda. Yeah. Langan can't wait. I never we, was like. A summer dude out here. I we, wasn't much of a boater. I didn't fish. I really had trouble fitting in. We're in black. T- <laughs> we're in black t-shirts. We're in black. You, that's he's, probably he's got a King did. Diamond shirt on. That's, that's, <laughs> that's how much amazing. We, that's amazing. how much we want to push that back. So yeah. Um, anyway, so our last episode was with Frank from Suffocation. Yeah. Um, I'm going to kind of just uh, go through. Uh, I went to Ride Fest, which is did a festival. Ever, yes. Which I really enjoyed, and it was the first time that I was on, on a plane for a while. Because, like, planes, somewhere along the way, I think I took my mom's anxiety mm-hmm. in my 30s. And now, if I'm not driving, I get anxiety. If I'm driving, I'm fine. I could be up for, like, 16 hours, and if I'm in the back seat of a car, I think I'm going to die all the time. Is that what just happened on the way out here? Is that why, is that, <laughs> is that why you called me and you were like, this guy, I don't know if he's going to make it. <laughs> he's going to make it. He doesn't look hey, so good. is that what happens when <laughs> you turn 30? Because I'm about to turn 30. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering if that's, is that what I got to look, look forward to? Pretty much. <laughs> um, so, uh, no, but uh, over here was fine because, like, the more traffic that I sit in, the less nervous I get. So you must you must be relaxed at this point. <laughs> yeah, we we definitely took the parade route. Yeah. We were just like we were waving a pumpkins. Yeah, I say pump- one more friggin' pumpkin, man. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah. Pumpkins coming out of my ears. Yeah. Just a skeleton on a tractor. That was yeah. cool. <laughs> guy needs to paint his house though. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to that guy. Sam's from Queens, so he was waiting for the guy with the banjo on the front porch. That comes later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so like I, I, I it was only like an hour and forty five minutes. I went with my girlfriend and um you know, it was it was worse going there because it's been so long since I've been on a plane. Uh, but on the way back, it was fine. But like, still, it's just like uh, I just I looked at like the the staff to make sure their faces were were cool. Like as long <laughs> as the stewardesses were laughing, were smiling, and pouring drinks. All right. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Right. I'm like, I'm like, all right. And I'm like, no one's freaking out yet. So. No babies. No crying. one's staring out the windows. Like yeah. So and <laughs> yeah. and you do look at people and you're like. That part of me does flip where it's like, is this how it ends? I do entertain that. And I try not to. And I look at everyone's face and then I think of like Final Destination. And I'm just like. Oh. It's a really healthy I attitude. know. For an hour and 40 <laughs> Remind me never to fly on a plane with yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm the new guitarist in Black Label, by the way. So, uh, <laughs> flying out next week. <laughs> you got to get used to flying, man. Yeah. These guys put up a murderous, Span- murderous <laughs> tour schedule. Uh, I'm the fat Spanish guy, Zach told you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I heard about you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, so we, we went out there, and my girlfriend wanted to go away, and it was awesome, and it was three days, and Jawbreaker did a reunion. Um, I got to see everyone from, like, Nine Inch Nails to Ministry, our buddies, and Taking Back Sunday played, so yeah. got to hang out with them. Shout out to Mark for, you know, all, all the cool shit he did for us. You get your passes? Yeah. So you didn't have to slum it with the peons in the public? Well, sweaty. he got his passes, but 
I wanted to watch bands. So I didn't, I, you know, I wanted to, like, I wasn't going to stage Potato. Right. Because they played at the <laughs> same me. time as uh, Queens of the Stone Age. Right. So we caught, yeah, it's one of my favorite bands. So right. we caught yeah. half of Queens, then we caught half of Taken Back, and then they did, like, a midnight show Sunday, so. Okay. But I had a really good time, man. Um, I can't wait. I, I know next, what, uh, in December, we're flying to Arizona. So I hate the heat. Now, so now you're, you're interviewing everyone, too, right, when you're there? Are you yeah. Just, yeah. Great. Absolutely. Good. Good. Definitely. Good. Man on the street. Man on the street. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Can I talk to you for a second? <laughs> <laughs> like, absolutely not. So. Man, God bless you, because I cannot do the festival thing. Make note to self: again. send them on uh, to, to every festival. No. Yeah. From now on. Ever since I went, you took me to Ozfest once, and there was like standing on stage with Hatebreed. And the air conditioner was like blowing. I'm like, man, this is it. I can't do that. Yeah, <laughs> there again in that locker yeah. room. Yeah, with the waft of like body odor that comes up. I'm like, nah, <laughs> no way. And and, <laughs> and with Ozfest, like you're there, and it's probably like you know, uh, jet. Like all these bands are close together, but there was five stages. Yeah, at Riot Fest, so it's like I needed to see Dinosaur Junior. I needed to see Built. Like everything was like, it was like. How many bands were on that festival? A lot. Sounds like it. Of like three days worth wow. with five stages. Who did you see that you didn't get to see, that you never got to see? Um, I never got to see Ministry, and they blew me away. They blew you away. They blew me away. Um, I never got to see. I think I seen everyone else. Oh, Jawbreaker, obviously. Yeah. Um, and then that's it. I I go to a lot of shows. Who headlined that? Well, there was three headliners. So nails, uh, obviously. The first, yeah, nails did Friday. The last three bands on Friday, amazing. It was Ministry, New Order, Nine Inch Nails. Wow. Then Saturday was Queens of the Stone Age on one side, Taken Back Sunday on the other. Cool. Uh, and then Sunday was Jawbreaker and Prophets, <laughs> Prophets of Rage. Like you would, you would have thought that people would be like, "Hey, wait a minute, those two guys are not Zach De La Roca." Yeah. And I love Public Enemy, and I love Cypress. Well, it's the concept of that band is so great, but. Is it though? It's it, the thought of wow, you know Chuck D, you know Rage. They were a political band, obviously. Absolutely. He's a pr- political lyricist. Yes, makes sense. But then when you hear the record, it just don't jive. Just as good as oh, audio. Oh, you slave. don't like it? No. Oh, you're not a fan. No. And be real. I mean, like, uh, is Me? he political? <laughs> I don't be real. <laughs> oh, 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 be real. From yeah. Cyber, Cyber. <laughs> How did he get in that band? I call him Cuban B. What's he needed? Is he a hype man? No, they're, they they basically take Zach's verses and they split them up, so it's like weird. Like it worked for one or two shows, I would imagine. Yeah. But seeing it, but I'll tell you this: as soon as they were done playing, they might as well have been the headliners. Really? That people lost their shit. Like we were like baffled. And obviously, Jawbreaker is like a distinct amount of like you know us like thirty year old you know losers that love that band. Thirty and year old, yes. Yeah. 39. I'm I'm still 39. There's the 30s again. I'm, I'm not looking forward to the 30s. <laughs> yeah. What's it like, guys? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm at 39, so I have a few months left. So, uh, sure. But I, I was completely floored. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you, you must have played festivals. What was that like? What were some good ones? Um, well, I mean, they were all good. But the, the, we What did was the this, first one you did? Uh, the first festival we did was OzFest. And were you just shitting your pants being like, holy shit, I'm playing OzFest? No, it was just because it was just we were all like, the bands. Everyone was in bands starting up. They, we were all getting to know each other. We were just kind of hanging out and partying and playing every day. It was, it was just like it was just a p- party. So no, it wasn't nervous. You know, we weren't. It wasn't like a nervous kind of thing. It was more of just we were just excited to be there. And just, that was with in this moment. In this moment, yeah. And and so you left here, like when did you leave Trip Face? No, we're taking it back. I think I was. <laughs> I think I was ten. <laughs> Let me ask Diane. How old is he? <laughs> ten. Yeah. It was around when I left for college. So I twenty years ago. You left not so long after. Well, I'm twenty nine. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 19 years. You were an ago. infant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, well, that, you know, I. Mid 90s, uh, probably, yeah. I guess. I mean, it was, I don't know, 93, 4, maybe? Yeah. I don't I don't remember. God, I, now we're going yeah, back, man. Did you, did you leave at the end, or did you. No, they kept no, going? we started the band, and then we, 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 then we just kind of handed it off. Yeah. It's too straight edge. Too straight edge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Didn't work for our lifestyle. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> All right, well, well I've been—I mean, I've been jamming with this guy forever. He was handing me mixtapes. 
on what to listen to when, yeah. when I was what was what was he, 12 what was years on old. Yeah, there was all there was all kinds of Metallica. Slayer. There was Slayer, there was there was uh Suicidal Tendencies, there was Dan- there was the the Misfits, you know, the good stuff. All, all the, all all the all, classics. Yeah. Yeah, all can the you make classics. me a mixtape? Yeah. I can do that. Thank you. Yeah. His mom's got like a church organ down in the basement, oh, and sick. it had a tape player on it. Yeah, I think we because we play down there. Shout out to Vincent Price. <laughs> <laughs> we out. play it in the in the organ. The tapes, these okay. Max L. There tapes. might even be in the in the in the bench still. The one Some might of those be in ta- there. Those, those tapes. <laughs> yeah. I love that stuff. But um, wait, wait, what the hell were we talking about? We were I'm talking sorry. <laughs> trip face. <laughs> oh yeah, you were talking about leaving because like I'm I'm trying to figure out what was going on on the east coast like all the way out here that just made you want to take off to the west coast well because you know i grew up out here yeah so there's really i mean to be a musician out here is like you're you're really not really going to be doing much yeah especially then there's actually more there's more places to play now yeah oh absolutely but i visited california i was 18 uh, my uncle lived out there. My sister lived in L.A. My, okay. uncle, my uncle lived in San Francisco. I went out there for a few weeks and visited them both, and then I was just like, I'm just going to move here. What was it about the, uh, the West Coast that you were just like, I think I'm going to do this? I just thought that there, there was more musicians, there was more bands to play in. What year was that? 97. 98. Okay, so that was like the... 98. That was like the year... That was like the Limp Biscuit, like... Because you figure 91 was like that grunge era. 94 right. was like Green Day. Mm-hmm. 97 was like Orbital and those bands. And then 98 came like yeah. Limp Bizkit yeah. Yeah. and that yeah. whole wave. Right. And, I was, and, and by then I was, listening to, I was listening to like fusion and jazz and stuff. Yeah. Like I, was, I was already out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I, I, I listened to I, I obviously metal and everything. But at that time in my life, I was listening to like I was getting into... Just other. Well, you were spinning records. You were DJing a lot of hip hop. You went to you went to all kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, you stopped playing for like a, a little while too, I did, right? Man, I like stopped what playing made drums. you decide? I always wanted to ask you, like, to get I, back. I'll tell you what happened. Kit, you I'll know? tell you what happened. I got up, I got behind the drums and I played, and I I was so bad. Like I was I was so I was like, oh my god, I forgot how to play. Because you thought you can get back and do your thing, right? Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I was it was still young. I was like sixteen. That's like Brian. Brian just jumped back on. Oh man, it was rough. It was rough. Fucking rough. Yeah. He's doing some reunion shows. Yeah. So 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 then it was just one of those things. I was just like, wait a second, what happened here? And then I just started. Yeah. I started practicing again and. And spinning records does really widen the palette. I noticed the people that. You know, because I used to DJ too, and it's like you, you just absorb so much music because you're just like, oh, I like this, I like this, I like this, and you could talk. I could talk to people that Johnny Cash, Jason Isbell, Wu-Tang Clan, yeah. like Sugar, yeah. all that stuff because it's just like I hit play, and I'm like, I do not like this. I hit play. I like this. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's so funny too how everyone, all the kids are about 90s hip-hop. Yeah. They're all about all the new kids. That, like they 90s hip hop <laughs> is like the kings. That's the heyday well, for me, I think. Everything so, kind, I, it's cliche to say, but everything does do that cycle thing. Mm-hmm. You know, like everything goes in cycles the way that Bobby Brown was just an impolite Michael. You know, <laughs> yeah. Quest, mm. you know? Shout out to that because yep. that's going to win the brackets. Yeah, no yeah, doubt. That's my I'll favorite. Theory. Um, but yeah, like, so it, it's fun. Hopefully, those kids do embrace that. Just like um, I go back and I listen to all the thrash records that I missed. Yeah, I never heard of At the Gates till Lamb of God cited them, ah. and they were like, "Oh, in the '90s there was no one playing except At the Gates, and we wanted to sound like them." So by the time Burn the Priest came out and all that other stuff, that's what they were going for. Mm-hmm. And then I went back. I'm like, "Oh, Slaughter of the Soul," and I'm like, "Holy Amazing. shit! This was like '95. Like this is yeah. killer. No sure. one was doing this." No. So um, let's talk about uh, the move then. So you go over there. Did you have anything lined up? Or no. Just, nothing? No, my mom came with me, though. Didn't you? Yeah. Um, yeah. No, we just we just packed it up, and we went over there, and I had I, – I, we went to my sister's in Venice Beach. She yeah. lived in Venice Beach at the time. Shout out to Mike Muir. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and um, that was it. And then my, my mom hung with me until I found a place in Silver Lake. And then, uh, yeah, Diane's got, like, yeah, my mom was there, man. Ride or die, man. Like, <laughs> she was day one. She was right. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, so, so we uh, we found a house for six hundred fifty dollars a month in in, in uh, Silver Lake, which is like forget it now. 
it's like you can't get a one bedroom yeah. for less than two thousand dollars a month there yeah. you know so um so i could play in it i could practice in it which was like another thing it was, it was huge yep. so even even with the bands i played in there with there they would come to my house and we, yeah, could, because we could jam there the rent that you pay at a space it's like okay let's just take that money and put it towards the rent i had cool neighbors too Okay. We all, we you all, need cool we neighbors. all, totally. We all would hang out and have barbecues, and like they loved music. So you know, I lucked out. This yeah. guy, this guy is just playing his basement now, like forty years old. Oh God, it's great now. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Only he owns the house now. So. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a lot more than six fifty a month. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, um, when did you start meeting musicians out there that you were just like vibing with? Well, I mean, I started right away. It was crazy. I remember auditioning for bands when I didn't even have my drums yet because I had my drums here. Was it? Was it? And like then I had I had that Ludwig kit that I just showed you. Mm -hmm. I had that shipped to me. So that's been with me in California for, for years and then I brought it back here when I was years later. But I was waiting for it to come out there. So all I had was my pedals, I think a snare. So I, good I, enough. I, I went to the, I went to like it's like presidents of the United States of America. That's all you need is like that thing. I'd, I'd go to some of these auditions and like I'd have like my snare and my pedals and like they'd be like, <laughs> "Dude, where's your drums?" And I'd be like, "Oh, I'm just gonna put my pe my pedals and I'll just whack against the wall here and then I'm just play." I I don't know what I was thinking. Man. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't care. I was just like, I'm just gonna get You're this like, done. I'm, I'm here. Yeah. I'm here, and somebody's gonna fuck. Somebody's gonna play. Yeah. So, <clears throat> and how did you find people? Because I, what was, what was uh, it, the music connection. <clears throat> yeah, because like the internet was not really no, a thing. No, so. no, we were still doing smoke signals, man. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. You were using pay phones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was only a few years after Ford Fairlane. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, but but it was the music connection, and it was just going through like just every. It was just it was comical, dude. Were you like? Stuff. Were you going for like things that you liked? Yeah, I, I I wanted to do. I wanted to play like funk and like jazz and stuff like that. Like I was, I was shit that doesn't make money. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, not only am I gonna be a drummer, I'm gonna try with no to, drum set either. No drums, <laughs> pet, like maybe a drum. Nice, but I'm also gonna try to play this other style of music that. I'm never going to make a dollar, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, that's everything that I've ever done in my life. It was like, cho like I, nothing I, I love is lucrative. That's why I still play Including music. Including this. This, like, yeah. this is like <laughs> this passion. This is a perfect example we're doing here. This is passion. <laughs> music is passion. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. At 39, yeah, I've released it. Goes a long way. Go yeah. listen to it, guys. My mom is telling me I sound like an asshole. I should <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Thanks, mom. No, we, we, whatever, she, whatever she says, we could just get we, her a mic. <laughs> we could, Thanks, mom. We could edit things together. I know I'm an asshole. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so, what was the what was the first thing with the first band that you joined over there? Static X, infectious groups. No, <laughs> I, I wanted to play in that band. They didn't. They didn't like your hair wasn't high enough. I don't think. Were, were you real? Did you really? Try I auditioned for them. Okay. I auditioned for them. I, I was friends with Ulrich Wild, who produced their records. Okay. Mm. He's done a lot of records. Cool dude. Um, a lot of stuff. My 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 sister was friends with Ulrich. I ended up being friends with him. So when they were looking for a drummer, um, he was like, "Hey, you know, you, I'll get you an audition. You can go try out." So I, I went and tried out, but you know they probably had a, a plethora lot. of drummers yeah. at the time, and they were like looking at me like, "Who is this kid?" Yeah, yeah. You know, it all worked. We, out, we don't though. know this guy. <laughs> but I think <laughs> the more I, 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 I'm not sure you would know, but like I guess the more and the longer that you do it, your name is constantly in there, you know. So it's like when someone needs that drummer, obviously you're you were black label now, but like I'm sure some people still hit you up. It's like well, it was more well, it's it's you know what, man, it's just everyone does it differently. I don't know. For me, it was just I started my own band. We all started in this moment together. You know, what, what year was that? Uh, 2003 ish, four ish. Was it that? So that's about right. 2003 sounds about right. Well, Dead Set was. Yeah, that's probably yeah, right. Yeah, because th that was all around the same time. Sure. Dead Set, Dying Star, it all became. Yeah. It all became uh, in this moment, but yeah. So I mean, and then we were. We were hitting it hard. Like we weren't even like we were touring. We didn't have a record deal. We were touring in a van or like do, doing a circuit, selling our little EP. You know, we had like a little I don't know three song thing, or whatever. And then we were we were just doing it, man. You know, it was like Friendster probably around by then, or was it MySpace by then? MySpace. MySpace. Yeah. Chris was on MySpace like. My man was on that. You had to grind. My man was on that. Throwing day up them bulletins. <laughs> Shout out to Chris Howard. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so, um, 
Yeah, that band's like the the sound is like an interesting fusion. Like it seems like a lot of influences yeah. that go into it because yeah. like Maria's voice is like fucking kind of amazing. It is. It's cool because it everything everything they put out, it's always different. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and it's it's I I'm a fan. Yeah, yeah. And you know? So so you were there from the beginning. Yeah. And then from there, like how many records did you play on? We with did them? three. Yeah, we did three records, and then and then I and then I left, and then Blake left, and so you leave. I'm mm-hmm. um, just kind of trying to figure out like why, like if everything is going good, like why why would you leave such a well functioning? Because band? I make good decisions. <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. Because because I it was it was just like it was just time. Yeah. It was, that's it. There's no, like those there's records. nothing that happened that there yeah. was like this. It was like things were kind of, there was other doors opening and thing. we kind of were just moving in different directions. And then one thing led to another and I got this gig with this person and, you know, it was all good. Yeah. Like I called them, like we're, we're it was, we're, we're, we're like family. We there's no stay. juice to that breakup. It worked out. Everybody yeah, happily. Yeah, it was just, it's it one was, of the rare occasions you're going to hear about probably in the industry. It did. It did because, because it, for, for both, for everyone. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was weird when people asked me, so what happened? It's like, eh, there wasn't really one thing that happened. It wasn't even a, and there was no bad blood. It okay. was just kind of like, we just moved on. So that's good. Yeah. Um, how did the James Durbin thing come about? Oh my goodness! That was through our manager Blasco um, was was working with him on something, and he needed. That's Ozzy's bass player. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was. That's all, why it sounded familiar. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. So he was he was our manager. He was okay. in this moment's manager, and then um, so he uh, he was like, hey, you know, you want to you want to play some drums for this kid to, to audition the guitar players or something like that, and I was like, yeah, yeah, cool, cool, and then uh, before I knew it, like. It was like we got through the, the whole all the auditions, and the kid wanted, you know, James was like, "Hey man, you do, you want to do, you know, you want to do this because it would be cool if you would do it." And I was yeah. just like, "Yeah, cool." And you then know? you were already out of, uh, in this moment. Um. Well, it was like this that time the period. Overlap. Yeah, okay. it was like that time period, and then you know, then one thing led to another, and I just I went and played with him, and and Blake the guitars. Yep, yeah, Blake went Blake, with him. Blake yes. went, Blake okay. came over and he started playing too. And was it like a nice and fresh thing, or was it just kind of like yeah, uh, dude, it was cool. You know what I mean? It was like we were playing some different music, and you know, it was a little bit of a style change up. So style was, change up. Definitely, it was cool. You know. Um, and the kid was like American Idol or something. He was on American Idol. You know, he was he was a rocker. You know what I mean? So and, and you got to play on American Idol, right? Yeah. With him. Yeah. What, what was that like? The, it was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Was it crazy being? Because that's a huge show. I mean, it was so funny. Dude. <laughs> what did Diane think? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Again with the asshole, mom. All right. All right. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> Awesome, yeah. So, I mean, what is that thing like? Like, yeah. just I don't remember any of this. I'm, I'm actually making all this up. I, I can barely even remember a damn thing. So, no, I'm just. That's the truth. I thought I remembered you telling me a story before you guys went on air. Like, some guy pulled you aside and was like, "You know, how's it, you're going to be on front in front of like." Yeah, but of you know, like, I, I don't remember any of that because I remember my pack was off. Like something was going on with my pack, so I was like, "Yeah, I don't know if I can hear anything." And he was like, "I hope so, kid." And he like tat- <laughs> patted me on the butt, and set me it. out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, that was cool. I remember, I, I remember thinking when I was in there, like, "Oh, this is actually like a small soundstage. Like, yeah. it looks so big on t- sure on uh, television." But when I was in there, I was like, "Oh, it's kind of small." Yeah. Funny you know? thing, my band played Fearless Music, which was like a show on Channel Five. It was like a thirty-minute show um and they would do like live performances and the same thing mm. it looked huge and yeah. when we got there it was like probably like a, the size of a bathroom <laughs> and the drummer was like behind the plexi and stuff and we were just like oh this is weird and yeah. then the guy hated us of course <laughs> yeah, he didn't like you <laughs> well because we knew that we were nobodies and probably didn't belong there and he was just like asking us our influences and like our <laughs> guitarist was like skunk baxter and he was just like <laughs> Skunk Baxter. <laughs> okay. And then he was just like, you know, whatever. He was just right. like, I'm going to go do a line of Coke, and you guys, <laughs> allegedly. Right, right, right. I don't know where the. And then they edited the song. I was just like, oh, fuck this shit. Edited <laughs> it, huh? Absolutely. Wow. It, they went verse, chorus, bridge. They cut out the, like, second verse. Really? Yeah. They're like, okay, we've yeah. heard enough. Of this. <laughs> we, we, we get the idea. Let's get to the end here. <laughs> we get the idea. Let's get Radio somebody. edit. Let's get somebody we that's going to do that something commercial. with their life. Uh, <laughs> now, when did you do Filter? 
Oh, my goodness. So Because that's filter, how I got close with this dude. I got you. I got you. So I did that right after Durbin. Okay. Yep. I remember I was, I was actually still playing with James. I went and filled in for – no, what happened was I was – I was playing with James Durbin. We went to Nashville to do a record with James Michael, the singer of 6 a.m. Okay. Okay? So we were doing James Durbin's record with James Michael then. And I got a call from Blasco saying, hey, I think I might have a fill-in gig for you if you want to do it. And I said, sure. And he said, with who? I was like, with who? He's like, Black Label Society. I was like, all right, cool. You know? And then... The next day, I got a call, and they said, okay, you're probably going to do it because whatever, whatever. And I said, all right, cool. Um, and then I went and did that. So I filled in with, with, with Black Label Society for whatever it was, a month. I came back. I was playing with Durbin, and then I got a call from Richard. Ah. And Rich was like, hey, do you know any drummers? I was like, yeah, me. Nice. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> do you think he knew uh, because like asking well, you? Well, I don't know, but I was stoked that he asked me because I was. Do you glad. know any drummers? Because I don't. Because I'm a fan. Should have been right? like, like, I don't filters. know. Do you know the T1000? Yeah. And see what he says. Because <laughs> I mean, because we toured with Filter when I was in In This Moment. Okay. We, we shared a bus together. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I. Because I saw you guys when you played Westbury. Oh, you did. And I spoke to him before on that that yeah. like sponge. Oh, you saw that. Shit was that awesome, was, dude. How awesome! Was awesome. That? That was so much fun. I right? hate Everclear, so thankfully they headlined, and I got the fuck you got out, out of there. I hate Everclear. I like, like it. I'm, not, I'm the only Everclear guy. Hey, I don't have an opinion on it. I walked. In I thought live sounded great, even <laughs> yeah. with like the the new singer. Oh yeah, so absolutely. Yeah, that, I think was Diane, that was a cool. Tour. I think Diane has something to say. Oh, I thought. I was, when you said Westbury, I was there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you were there. Yeah. That's right, mom. I forgot. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Mom's yeah. made a lot of shows. Yeah, yeah she's, like the... Again with the asshole, <laughs> mom. <laughs> Guy's gonna be thirty. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Who was it with? That was that was with Durbin though. That was yes at the Paramount. Yep. Mm. Yep. Shout out to the Tostitos they give you. <laughs> I've, been, I've been at all those shows with you. I'm like yeah. a pro, I'm his professional strapper, <laughs> stage potato. He is every step of the way. I've Yo, been, I heard I, you're in town. Yeah. <laughs> I've been known to I've been known to stage potato. <laughs> I, you know how many shows we've been to? <laughs> a lot. Every and now I and remember then. like it was an Ozfest or something, and I was watching Lamb of God from the side of the stage, and I think I remember Jeff telling me. It's like you know, the bands sound like shit when you watch them from the side of the stage. Oh, when absolutely, they really front. do though. Everyone sounds terrible from the <laughs> side of the so stage. But it's so cool to stand there. He, you here's don't the wanna, thing: like... you know who tells you shit like that? <laughs> what? Guys that do it for a living. Right. Guys that don't want you look, around them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do not want to be staring at your yeah. ass the whole time. Go out there. It's where like, it yeah, hard. you're fucking friends with the drummer. Just move. <laughs> Believe me, like I, those are the guys, you know. Yeah, and, like you, know, you, you look over to your left, you're like, what the hell are you yeah. smiling at? Go out there with the front yeah. of the house. Now I get it. Okay. Now I get all the looks all these okay. years. I, I get it. <laughs> let, let, let a guy live for like 30 fucking minutes. Uh, I don't care. I love standing oh, there. Yeah, that's man. all. So, um, so filter, right? So we were filter. on the filter. Yes. So, yeah. So basically, that's how, that's, I don't know if I, did I sum that up? Yeah, I think, I think so. so. Did I answer yeah, that? I mean, we're, I, I love. You recorded with them? Or is it no? D- just so live, yeah. Just live, yeah. Just shout live. out to Dan Terra, Love and Filter, by the way. How he, uh, yeah, he even likes the record that I don't like, which is the the Stomp Four Four Two. No, he <laughs> likes Stomp Four Four Two. That's his favorite Anthrax record. How is it possible? It's not, it's not possible. It's not possible, no. right? He's it, like clowning us. It's a. It's got to be a joke. Yeah. At this point, it's like among it's the living or Stomp Four Four Two. I know. <laughs> <laughs> He's just being that guy. Yeah. You know that has to pick the other thing. That's right. So, um, how, how was yes. that experience though, with, with Filter? Was it fun? Like, oh, to it was just awesome. Do like a one-off? Yeah, Were you a fan kind of like? Well, no, 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 no. I, 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 I was with him for for like a year and a half. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So we took, you know, we did Europe together, and we did Australia. Did the you first ever time meet, meet his T one thousand brother? No, no, I didn't. I never met his brother. How could I? No, I never did. No, mm-hmm. but our bass player was the Carl's Jr. guy. The voice, ah, Phil. Shout out to cool. Phil Buckman. That's, right. that's pretty cool. You met Phil Buckman, Mom, our bass player, that's the filter right. bass player. We're trying to get a Carl's Jr. Uh, sponsor, sir. Sponsor. <laughs> That'd be nice. Dude, he's got the voice. Some curly fries, <laughs> something. I need, I need to gain more weight. <laughs> <laughs> so. um, all right, so before we yes. get to, to your, your main gig right now, yeah, uh, as a huge, huge, and we all are, Motley Crue fan, yeah. Oh. Tell me the 6 a.m. story. Like, how, oh. how did that happen? Because it's like, I think we all grew up loving the crew. Of course. <sighs> Hands down. First you know. city I ever bought. Yeah. Was it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was a total fan. So how, how did that come about? 
Um, uh, well, I was doing I was doing the record with James Durbin with James Michael, singer Six AM. Okay. Oh, that's Bam. right. Yeah, yeah. So he was like, "Oh man, it would be cool if you could play on a Six AM record one day." I was like, "Yeah, dude, I'd love to oh, do let that." Let me check my schedule. <laughs> so, I was like, so you know, um, I was by this time I would I was already in Black Label, and then um, he was like, "Hey, you want to?" No, actually, no, I wasn't yet. I hate to be that guy. I just want to get everything. Oh yeah. Um, so I ended up doing a record. I ended up doing the record with Six AM. This is before Black Label. And so that didn't interfere whatsoever. No, and then right after that, I ended up getting the the gig. And when we had a break, I played one show with Six AM. Um, that was the iHeartRadio. Okay. Yeah. Where but was that? Cali. It was in uh, L.A. Yep. Like a big like festival type. No, show no, no, no. It was on a, you know uh, in a sound st- sound stage. You know, okay. live on television. Oh, was that iHeart. for like the that Stars video? Yeah. That was that. Well, that came from that. Okay. But we did a we did a set. I know he's going to make fun of me, but I love that song. It's a great song, yeah, right? It is. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead. I, I okay. like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's catchy, out. catchy as hell, dude. That record is, is, is I like, interesting. Yeah, yeah, I like. I, I think Nikki Six is a really good songwriter. He's awesome. Whenever yeah. he um, like pushes and and like once he did all he could do with Motley Crue, yeah, and he jumped out that box. I think he's a really good songwriter. Yeah, absolutely, he definitely like, is. You yeah. know those those records, like the first two records. Um, are kind of classics. Yeah. You know, On With The Show. No question. Bastard. Like, that's I mean, you don't have to get this guy started. I mean, Tommy Lee. (laughs) That was my man. That was the dude right there. I had him on my wall. And I I, I hung with him. So how surreal was all that? So it's, it's, (laughs) it's, so that was, well, first of all, I mean, yeah. Like you're sitting, I'm sitting there rehearsing you know, and I'm looking at hey, Nikki. Dude. I'm looking at Nikki Six. He's like rocking out with yeah. me. I'm going oh, like, right, if yeah. I would have thought, you know, <laughs> yeah. the ten year old me was going to be doing this like at 28 years old. Yeah. Did you I, Did you call Langan <laughs> right away? You're like, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. You're not going to believe this. But. I was and, like, and Holy I did, I did, I did, shit. I did, I did looks looks that kill with him. Amazing. Yeah, I think I. Yeah, I remember playing that with him in rehearsal. Yeah. He started jamming it. I was like, I was right. That on. Big, I was like, that I know big this. bell going at you. Totally, uh, man. Did, I was like, Did Did Lang and start? Did you start practicing the guitar after he told you that? <laughs> You're like, I got to get back in the game. <laughs> wow, man. He the headlines were gonna come out. Motley Crue ex trip face. Yeah. Uh, man. That would yeah, be but cool. I mean, no, that was a mind blow of a phone I, call. I was like, wow. And you know, I mean, it was, it was filling in with Zach was the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Sure. yeah. I mean, Absolutely. That was like that was another. I you know I grew up with him on my wall. Yeah. So. Um. Yeah, and so watching the Wild Side video, watching Tommy like upside down, yeah. like yeah. that's like that was the one thing. Um. Just I didn't play drums. I like I played guitar, but still watching, I'm like, this guy is upside down yeah. playing drums. Like that's insane. It was like the best. Like. Yeah. And totally. doing backup vocals. Yeah. You know. Yeah. He's so talented. He hit so hard, and and the showmanship is a plus plus. You know, when he plays Tommy yeah. with the sticks, everything, oh, all the yeah. stuff he does, it's just the best. So, so what what happened to basically, like, why why did that end? I guess because you got the black label thing. Well, I was already, yeah, I was already doing it. I yeah. was or, by then. I was already, I was already in black label, and and you know, James, yeah, you know, obviously they were just they they don't, they were all cool. You okay. know I mean, they're everything, but they were just like so they had that one show, and then and then I just I had to go back out on tour. Yeah, and then check this. The kid who is now in 6 a.m. ended up. He wrote me like a like a year before that happened, going like, "Hey man, I, I just you know, I was a fan of in this moment or whatever, and then I kind of watched you get into this band and that band and how'd you do it or whatever." And I just ended up writing him like, "Well, this is how what I, all I did, and I can just tell you like how you know what I did was just play in bands and just be seen out there and play as, with as many people as I could all the time." And and then he ended up getting the gig. Amazing. Which was just like crazy, and I didn't yeah. put two and two together until later, and I Th- went, that's wait a, a second. Wow. That's him. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, dude, I wrote him right away. I was like, dude, a high five, yeah. you know? Like, that's killer. Yeah, because yeah. at, at this point, like, you do, like your mom said, it's like... I'm for, an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> the second thing she said, though. You know, for like, for everyone back home, like, you know, all of us that just like still always played... Like, you, you know, you did it, you know, like it's got to be like you got to like look around. You're like, all right, you're like this is what I wanted to do with my life and I'm doing it with my life. Like, that's yeah. really fucking awesome. Yeah. So um, how did uh, the black label thing happen then? 
Well, it's like I said, I went and filled in. Okay. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So then, so then they knew me from that, and then, um, and then uh, they couldn't stand me. But I just called them so many times that they just had to like me after a while. Yeah. How did that go with the audition when you play? There was no. Th- what do you mean? Th- didn't you have to play like something in front of them, like before no, a show no, no, or no. something? No, well, no, no. Did you actually bring a full drum set or no. just another? Well, this was the thing. I didn't. I didn't. I, I didn't have any drums to really play on because I was doing a record. Mm. I was doing that the, the Durban record. So I had literally one night to kind of listen through some stuff where I had a drum kit, and then the yeah. next day I was flying. Wow! So that I flew, good. I flew over there, and then I made a bunch of notes from the from the. He sent me a set list, and I went through the songs and made a bunch of notes, and then I got there, and the bass player JD was like, "Hey, uh, I hope you listen to. I hope those notes aren't for the studio versions, uh, the the record versions, because we play those songs totally different." And I was just like, "Ah!" Oh. Oh. <laughs> so then I had to go back and like look all all these YouTube videos and Chad at the time. I was like, "Chad, can you send me some videos of like? Because there's like." millions of videos like which ones am i watching here you know so, yeah yeah definitely yeah. so anyway yeah so yeah i mean i remember just basically the first time that they were all i was sat down behind the drums to play the songs was in front of everybody <laughs> that's awesome you know what i'm yeah, trying to don't say don't screw up so you're just like uh, and you know i just listening to them in my headphones and they were having they were trying to get the stage set up at the time and all this stuff so we ended up rehearsing the the day of the show you know we got some stuff through it. And no pressure, it, man. No, no pressure. pressure. Is Zach as funny in real life? <laughs> He's hilarious. He's hilarious, right? Yeah. He seems like like just complete ball busting, hilarious dude. Yeah, all day. All day. All day. <laughs> and busting your balls. And he lives yeah. out in Cali, right? The compound. Yeah, he lives in California. Yeah. With those New Jersey roots. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's East Coast. Definitely. Everybody in the band is. Is it? Yeah. yeah. You Dario's, can hear it in his voice. Yeah. Like when he talks, yeah. Definitely. Like uh, Dario's definitely. from Boston and JD's from Jersey. Yeah. I'm going with. I'm going to go see. My mic just went out. Oh. Uh, yeah, there we go. I'm going to go see JD uh, Monday. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what are you guys up to now? Uh, well, we're going to start rehearsing in December. Okay. And we're going to start touring December 26th. Uh, are you guys making new music? Or yeah, just we got a new record coming out. Okay. So that's... Uh, so that's I, I I don't know the date of when that record is actually coming out. How does the writing happen? This is the second album you recorded with them, right? Well, no, well, this, this, this is the, the first Zach black. Wild, yeah, the yeah, Zach right. Wild Book of Shadows two, but this is the first black label record. Right, right. Yeah. How does the the writing happen? Like, are you like you just you guys all just jam? Zach just writes. You know, he's got a bunch of ideas. We go in, play through the stuff. Easy. Yeah. Cool. No problems. I like it. Where Where's the uh, out in the compound? Yeah. Nice. I, 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 I Vatican. See, I've seen I've seen footage <laughs> the of Black the Black Vatican. Definitely, <laughs> it looks pretty cool. So. It's awesome. Um, all right. So basically, the show is mostly about like music, movies, and like influences and stuff. And anytime like Brian and Brian and I would get together, we would just have these long conversations about like the most ridiculous things that, for the most part. Only a handful of people would like, you know, we, we would talk about like black roses or like yeah. just like all these things. Uh, so we decided to just kind of like record it. So I, I like asking the people that come on um, as far as their influences go. So um, can you give us like five musical influences that to this day just made you want to play music? Well, musical influences as far as musicians just or bands? Just as far as like... Yeah, any, let's do drummers. Arts, you know? Drum, let's do you drummers. Do drummers? Yes. Okay, we'll do drummers. We'll do we'll do five drummers and then five bands. I hope Dennis Chambers is in there. Um, well, of course he is. Thank but you. But I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the first, like who really, like out of the gates, who who like inspired me to play drums. And I'll say John Bonham, Neil Peart, Stuart Copeland. Um, let me see. Simon Phillips. Well, yeah, but but not out of the gates. I didn't know who he was yeah. yet. Like, you know, because I got Jeff Piccaro. I got yeah. oh, Vinnie Caliuta, nice. Steve Gadd. Nice. Those are like my God. Yeah. But, like, I'm just saying when I was growing up. So what, I, got, I got Bonham. I got... Neil Peart. I got Neil Peart. I got... Stuart Copeland. Stuart Copeland. Um, who else was my guy? Um, Tommy Lee. Mm. And... I'm trying to think who... I got... I mean, I would have to say probably... Tommy Aldridge? 
Nice. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying nice. to pick up, like, yeah. when I was growing yeah. up and I was a kid, who who did I see? That Lars, was, Lars was a big dad, Oh, too. man. You know what? I got to give it to Absolutely. him, too. Tommy Aldridge yeah. had, like, the biggest drum set I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. It was, like, the size of this. Ugly one. dude, but great drummer. Slammer, dude. Yeah. yeah. Killing yeah, bro. it. Yeah. <laughs> Killing it. White Snake, too, right? White yeah. Snake. Yeah. White yeah, yeah. Snake, yeah. He was on, he was what on the what do you think about, like, the bum rap Lars gets all the time shitted on? It, it Does it matter? Undeserved, all right? I got to say is this. Does it matter? Cha-ching. Exactly not. No, yeah. I, and I think what it is, it's like internet culture. Because I think people pile on to it and they don't really understand. Like somebody said it and it's like, oh yeah, Lars sucks. It's like, well, why? Yeah, like unless right. you're a drummer and you want to talk technicality. But like when I hear... He I don't know, did you hear? Like, he did a good up. job on Injustice for All. My favorite Metallica no question. record. Top yep. 10 of all time for me. Brutal. Yeah, it's yep. like... He was brutal on took that. Took him no a question. year and a half to record those tracks. It's killer. Yep. Yeah, that's that's the best record. Hands we up. always mention Metallica. We always do every yeah, show. And so, so, so I gotta say, up. yeah, I didn't even say Lars, and I have to. He has to. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna bump one of them. I don't know which one, but we'll put Lars. See you later, yeah, we were all of them. <laughs> Aldrich. Sorry, Tom. Uh, he went, he, you, you went, and your you fro. went for Tommy. Yeah. I didn't do that. Throw her out of here. <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't bump him, but you, yeah. you did. Um, okay, so I just now we're gonna. Lars do like, is like five and a half because he's and tiny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna do uh, five musical influences because I'm super curious. Like the the five bands that, that you could look back to this day, and think like these are the bands that still make me want to play. I like the bands that just affected your life the most. Oh well, it goes to those bands. Well, uh, definitely Zeppelin still. Mm -hmm. um, Van Halen. I'm the only guy who hates Van Halen. These guys. I'm not a dude, big yeah Van Halen dude, guy. Either, these guys, but. I had to like. Drop the knowledge on them, and, and this, a lot this of the interview's listen, over. The listeners yeah. of the show, no Van Halen love. I'm like a guys and I'm bad. I'm a Van Hagar guy. Oh, okay. I yeah. can believe this. I'll, no. I'm a fan too, no. dude. The first six Van Halen albums are not. They're like Bibles. You gonna they, fuck with Pound Cake? <laughs> I will. <laughs> <laughs> Really? Run around when the, it's the best when that drill a, comes out. Run around. Oh, in music. I was 13 watching that. Like that blew my mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> Dan yeah, so so you don't you don't remember like half a teacher? On, on, no, on I was that. like uh, six. Wow, Young is, man. Yeah, I was fresh out the gate. <laughs> I remember though watching that video when the when the bus was going. And I was just like, wait, that's a drum set making that. Yeah. You know, because it sounds like a motor going. What an amazing yeah. drummer. Oh, my God. I didn't Alex. even say Alex. Come Van on, yes. man. I know that you're going to be 30, but you're, Holy you know. Holy shit. Memory goes I know, Mom. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Memory goes at the, I think your mom just called you an asshole. My mom's <laughs> like, how did you forget Alex Van Halen, you <laughs> asshole? <laughs> um, I want to really touch on, like, a favorite, one of my favorite stories that you told me about him, because I've never mentioned oh, it until today. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait a second. Hold no, on. No, it's the MSG one. Hold it's the, the MSG one. one. Oh, okay. Wait, uh, oh, we could Chinese overseas. food? <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. will let it out. <laughs> that one's shout, okay. Shout out to, to my uh, food kings out there. <laughs> yeah. That story's all right. <laughs> yeah, the, I, I, when, when you told me the story, I forget, I forget how it even came up, but how you guys used to practice here. And you guys used to practice to like Motley Crue and all that stuff, sure. You know, and then like, obviously Diane would hear this stuff, and then like you know you got you got to open right mm -hmm. MSG for. That was on the Ozzy and Rob Zombie, Rob Zombie tour. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So like that, like what was playing MSG like? It was um, it was awesome. My, my my well, my grandmother, God bless her heart, she was alive at the time too, so she was there, and it was like a whole Mattituck section my mom was there. Mattituck section. I'm serious. I finally, I finally. <laughs> Gave my mom back something besides some problems. I was like, <laughs> I was like, here you go, mom. Mad's a square guard. Now let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you told you told everyone, right? My son, I got to go get my hair done. She's like, uh, you remember my my son? It was always in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's playing Mad's a square guard, <laughs> <laughs> asshole. <laughs> you got to play a drum solo too, didn't you? No. Then you really play drum solos on that tour? No, right? no, I had to Just do it because, yes. because <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes <laughs> yeah, that one. No, no, not, not then, but I had to do it on the second leg because we didn't have enough songs. Oh, okay. And and uh, w zombie left a little early, so oh, right. so instead of us trying to figure out a new song and whatever, I was like, oh, I'll just do drum solo. Yeah. These guys were cool enough. So I took a Greyhound to Ohio, met them. And got the ride on the bus back. Yeah, they had the bus with the. You guys were all painted on the no, side we of didn't, it. We didn't, oh, did we have a bus? Oh, we had a bus. You then. were all. Your faces were all. Yeah, on it. man. Shit, that mega bus. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. And that I rode the bus back with them to the to the garden. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, so through state, it was fun. That's so much fun. Yeah, so you got to see like everything. That bus put us in a hole. 
Say? <laughs> we just had this discussion. Yeah, that bus was cool, all right. Sam and I were just all talking the way to about the bank. that. We just had this discussion because of... Who Converge. Converge. We were talking about Converge because oh. they're you know, fairly big band, and they were yeah. saying that they've been so big for the past 10 years that or they could have... they're could've... able not to work. Yeah, yes. So they go, how come you guys aren't in a bus? And they say, because we don't have a bus and we stay in a van, we when we money. come home, we make money and yeah. we don't need to go back to work yep. in between tours. Without mm. a doubt. So, Without a doubt. You know? The bus was nice. Yeah. Talk to me, so, now I want to know this, because this will never happen to me, but talk to me about endorsements. Okay. When did they come in? Which band was it in? What was first? In this moment, I was, um, my, I was doing, I was endorsed by this co- drum company called Shine. Okay, yep. Remember them? Yep. Yep. Um, while I was on tour, something, uh, we were on tour with Megadeth. Okay. Sean Drover. Yes, yep. Slamming yep. drummer. Um, was a D-drum guy. And I just, I just, I just needed some other, some other drums because I, I going different places and backline and things like that. It wasn't mm-hmm. any reasons besides that that I wanted to get D drum. But um, yeah, he was like, I'll hook you up with with D drum, and and we could go from there. And then I've been with them since, since in this moment. That's and awesome. It's the same as Minel. Okay, that's how you. I never knew how to pronounce yeah. that. Yeah. So Minel, okay. uh, I got in. I got in the. You know got in then which is that's incredible. great so you've been with them how long now you figure since 2007 wow so i don't know we said minel on the way here so i guess we were right damn yeah. right about Richard, the bus vic for two vic for okay <laughs> i've been with all the same guys yeah all the same guys now really boring question what is your current setup these days um <laughs> well you know i got i got a i got a d drum uh d drum usa kit so it was all made in the USA. Um, it's killer. Um, 24 by 18 kicks, too. And then I have uh, 10, 12, 13, 16, 18. But mm. I only use two racks. But I have, I can. But you I, got three. Okay. Yeah, I can swap, switch if I want okay. to. Um, normally I'll go like 12, 13, you know what I mean, on, for the racks. That's what I did. Yeah. 16, 18. That's normally what I do. Um, different snares, you know, all D drum. Um, I use uh, I, I let you I let you thing was heavy as hell yeah it's like it's like a it's like a bell brass yeah yeah um, that's a steel uh, steel cast what uh what heads do you use Evans okay Long Island there you go Evans is all Long Island um, shout out to Long Island yeah, yeah. good up. place strong <laughs> like it baby definitely um and there's basically like just two ply clear heads you know where you can beat on them and they're they're gonna hold up. One day I'll be able to use my foot and my arm at the same time. <laughs> That's my problem. You know what's funny, too? I play guitar, and whenever I hear a song, I never play air guitar. Right. Fucking boring. I already know how to do that. I like doing this. Nice. I like yeah. playing air drums. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta do that. And my friend who's a drummer was like, what the fuck are you doing? It's like this. <laughs> I'm like, you were an air drumming wrong. Whatever, You're like, man. maybe you air drum that way, <laughs> yeah. but I don't know. I'm I have like, a different technique, so yeah, I'm never going to get a sponsorship air drumming yeah. wrong, you know? <laughs> I I think it's it's a fun instrument, but it's just at this point in my life, I just can't learn anything else. Costly as hell, though the mo- most expensive instrument. Drums, you know. My mom knows all about yeah. it. Oh yeah, you know. Yeah. Why she calls <laughs> an asshole? She calls an asshole so many it. times. Yeah, she just can't stand. I remember the first time I broke a drum head. Yeah. I went and I told my mother. She was like, "Oh my god, how much is that gonna yeah. cost to fix?" I was like, "Fifteen bucks." Is that all? Yeah. The drum isn't broke. It's the drum, the drum head. head. You know? You need the Evans heavyweight. Ah, uh, nice plug. Well, Very good plug it. right there. Yeah, no, but if you, that's a good that's a good snare drum head. Okay. Shout out to that. Uh, well, let me ask you too, but I mean, at this point, you've pretty much toured every single continent you've been on um, at some point. Um, no, I well, I haven't been, been to, to Israel. Ap- you've been to continents yes but not That's everywhere no at all yeah not everywhere. you know what i mean you've yes been to a lot of places yeah. what's some of the most interesting spots you've been to south years? america is all very interesting chile shout yeah. out to my colombian yeah family. Nice. played we played uh bogota okay. awesome nice my family's from Festival. cali shout out to narco season three <laughs> right on shout shout <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, there's been, yeah, Israel was pretty amazing. The fans are intense probably in those yeah. places, right? Because people don't come through is as often, I'm guessing. Like, because, like, the markets over there seem to be no, like. I, don't, I mean, well, not, not the places that I've been. I mean, bands go through. Yeah. I just think that, I don't know. It's yeah. just, I, I think it's always been that way. Right. Right? It always seems 
to have been that way. Mm-hmm. What, is, what is metal, this? right? Like metal bands going to Europe and yeah. just doing well. And what you said, I know you see like those Maiden videos where they tour the one. And the fans oh, are like yeah, bananas, like, man. Because yeah. it's, I think it's, you know, they don't take it for granted that, you know, no. I won't go to this show at the Garden this week. Somebody else will pass through yeah. this and that. Like, holy shit, that, Black that, Label's coming to town. We got to go to this fucking show, you know? That Scorpion's No One Like You video is like at like I thought that Japanese kid's head was gonna fall off the way he was <laughs> banging yeah. it. The so worldwide I, life. Yeah, it was just like wild. Like they 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 get down. So they, ja- you've been to Japan a Japan, few times, right? Yeah. China. They treat you like the Beatles over there, right? I remember when we first <laughs> went over there, they 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 were like at the train station with really? like our first record, like wanting us to sign it. Did they hand you gifts and shit? Did they make you yeah. homemade? They like they, they would tell us to get like come into their stores and give us free clothes and Wow. Yeah. I really awesome. like that. I just picture some like Japanese tailor like with a seam like going around him. <laughs> you want <Jesus>. pants? <laughs> you want pants with green tea Kit Kat? <laughs> oh man! Uh, shout out to Dan Lamelli from Incendiary because yeah. those guys are out in over Japan in Japan right, right now. Japan now. Uh, Bring me back a shirt, thank you. Long Island hardcore. He's not listening. I'm gonna get you. Fuck, is he listening? When he gets thing? back, he's gonna catch up. Yeah. <laughs> he could be listening he's while he's watching my dog while I'm in Florida. So. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So. <laughs> Um, on those long flights, man. Like those. Like, what's the longest tour that you've been on? Mm, it's gotta be a black tour? label track, right? I mean, yeah. You guys absolutely. tour like machines, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I, does does it really like? I, I would imagine like after the first week, it's cool, and then the second week, like, when does it start? You know, like those plane rides. Like, I just went on a plane. Man. I just ate it. I couldn't imagine. You yeah, it for like I mean, two I, hours. You ever shit your pants on a plane? <laughs> oh, I, 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 daily. <laughs> Don't I? What do you do? Are you supposed to? <laughs> I'm not using that bathroom. Wait, that's a barf bag? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, listen, it's just like anything else. There's, there's moments where it gets grueling, this, that, and the other thing, but at the end of the day, it's all worth it. You, you grind, know what right? I mean? Yeah. yeah. It's all work. Is it really what they say? Like it's just hotel to hotel, or do you are you get find you get in time to like sightsee when you get these? Yeah, no, no, no. We get this. We get this. Yeah, because I know when you're in Israel, you took some amazing shots. Totally, it's like you know, even if there's a day off, or even before the gig, if we're if we're out that night, we'll go walk around and right, you know. So fuck Bob Seger. Wow. That song's a lot. Is that Night Moves? (laughs) No, turn the page. (laughs) (laughs) Shout out to Metallica though. So all right, um. Jeff, what an awesome life. Uh, thank you for doing this. Um, yeah. We always do like a top five at the end, and today we're going to discuss like our top five favorite rock ballads. Cool. Um, yeah. So the qualifications. It's very, I wasn't sure how to go. Me neither. I did we a wide range. We don't, we don't know what we're doing, like so what, I'll make up rules. What constitutes technically being a ballad? Hard, soft, hard, soft. Like the dynamic, is it? You like you said bands that are normally heavy and then they went soft. You just want to say hard and soft. I did. I've been waiting twenty one episodes to work. I saw your eyes, baby. Your eyes lit up when you (laughs) like a Christmas tree. The downfall of turning (laughs) thirty. Feels so bad. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. But yeah, no, there was you know, because like Zeppelin like had a lot of songs that were heavy and soft and you know and and vice versa and stuff like that. But Stairway is what you think of as like many things with this show. I don't know what the fuck we're doing, and I just. Throw yeah. shit out there. I didn't want to. I, I'm glad you said it. I, I like uh, to think that what I'm, this list I'm making is really important. You know. Yeah. Oh no, <laughs> it, it is. It is. <laughs> it is to like the people listening because they, you know, they get very passionate. They do. Um, but it's like when I was like thinking because some I'm thinking, a little too much. R- <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed. <laughs> you guys need to relax out there. Yeah, it's just. It's, I would pick REM Night Swimming as my favorite ballad of all time. But when I think about it, they don't really rock too hard. No. So it's no. like everything is. Who doesn't rock hard? REM. REM. Okay. Yeah. U 2s one same thing. It's like so. I'm thinking like, oh, you that know, song like sucks. I love. I'm gonna fucking. I'm oh, gonna like fucking handle song. this right I now. I got. Song. I got this. Let me straighten this all out. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Diane, you like U two? Come on. Oh, she She's Irish. Irish. Now she called you an asshole. She's <laughs> Irish. Come on. <laughs> They're early work. Bono. <laughs> I like that song. Not when Bono put on the stupid glasses. Um, went away. So yeah, I, I think you know whatever five we pick is is what it is, and um, right, just, wrong, and different. We're going All to right. give shine to these songs. So here we go, Jeff, our guest, All number right. five. <laughs> One, two, three, go. <laughs> One, two, three, go. <laughs> five. Uh, so Jeff, give yes. us your number five top rock ballad. 
Number five would be Fade to Black Metallica. Mm. 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 I see. Can't fuck with that. Can't fuck with that right no, there, seriously. right? That was Bam. like, I feel like um, from what I heard, you know, Brian Slagel say that like the people that championed and loved Kill 'Em All, that they really hated Ride the Lightning. And he said that they used to call it Ride the Light Bulb. Wow. <laughs> Um, because they felt that they sold out and shit, and like obviously the song was escape. So good. I mean, escape was definitely a different direction. Yeah, but it's not a bad song. Now, but you know, I mean, it's but I know fans, metal fans were look, metal fans there. are some of the best loyal fans in the world, and also some of the complete biggest assholes on the entire planet. Absolutely, and you're one of them. I'm, nice, my mom right just here, said it too. right here. I know, Diane. I know. Oh. And, <laughs> and if the internet existed around Fate to the Black, internet made it worse. They would have blasted the shit out of uh, out of Ride the Lightning like day one. But that great record, great yep. song. Sure. That outro. The I, intro solo is my warm up riff. Nice. The, the intro the, that little lick that Hammett plays, that's what whenever I pick up a guitar, that's the first thing I do. You know what I do? What? I know what you do. Monkey business. That's right. <laughs> skid uh, row. A little skid row action. Yeah. What do you do when you pick up the sticks? Your first little thing you play. Just a little You do a little twenty one twelve? Yeah, that. Is there a go-to <laughs> thing you do? Like, you find yourself you do every time as soon as you just loosen up? Stroke me? No, not really. What was that? Stroke me. <laughs> I, I, do some, I do some sort of stroke. Nice. <laughs> what is that, Billy Squire? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Stroke Horrible. me, stroke me. Horrible. Right, bad question. That's just, that was a terrible <laughs> fucking question. <laughs> could you could you tell by the way I looked at you? you we'll take that out that. later. <laughs> I see that look from you so much, I don't know what it means That was anymore. just like, are you fucking kidding me right now? <laughs> That look doesn't work on me after all these years. <laughs> I just plow right through it. <laughs> all right. All right, Lang, number Great five. Great choice. Uh, number five. <laughs> Don't I say did the have cure. Fade the Black. <laughs> Don't say the cure, because... Which cure song do I have? <laughs> <Okay. here? laughs> we do these brackets. I got a... I, you know, we had Frank from Suffocation on, yeah, yeah. who's a heavy as hell, obviously. We do these brackets with, uh, you know, the best albums and stuff of uh, Movies. a certain year. And came down to the Cure, head on the door versus Slayer, Hello yeah. and the Cure won. No way! But yeah. it was divided, and I, people were adding people to the group yeah. just so they could vote for Slayer because that's how fucking like petty Slayer. It's fans like a cheat are. option. Right I, ne- I told Sam I was like telling Frank that that yeah. I voted for the Cure. Like I, I never wanted to crawl more in a hole. I felt so embarrassed to myself. I'm like. This guy's looking at me like, what? And he yeah. hated the Goonies, too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, He hated the Goonies, but he's a little old. He's a lot older. Actually. But his re- his review he of the Goonies, mad. he goes, that's that movie with the fat kid in the pirate ship, right? Yeah. <laughs> Junk. Yeah. Well, he got mad because Commando didn't win. Yeah. Great Which movie. I get that. But I, di- you know, I digress here. Okay, I'm going to go with my number five choice here. Um, Pearl Jam, Black. Ooh, oh, okay. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, Great album. It's yep. a perfect song. It's a the vocals are so passionate. The lyrics are beautiful. It's uh, the dynamics are great. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Do you think perfect song? That record slams. Dave so Abruzzi, man, amazing. That dude. unplugged still holds what, up. Amazing, yep. and they won't let him in the the Hall of Fame. Oh my God, guys, couldn't so play good. with them. He must yeah. have done some shit. I tell you, that Tasty. guy did five struck rolls like it was going out of style. I liked his playing better than than uh, Cameron. Yeah. Oh, Matt Cameron just I like, like a, his playing, like but a, in not the with pocket. Pearl Jam. Like David Bruzy was just a madman. Oh, he just had feel. I like. He was it, smacking but, those splash symbols, yeah. like you know. But Black, uh, Black's a great song. But great I remember, album. you know, just like that song <clears throat> was a complete standout right away. Yeah. You know, because you had the singles. Like Jeremy was like, okay, mm-hmm. like it, when it first came out, it was awesome because it was so different. You know, all those bands got lumped together, the grunge thing, mm-hmm. but like Alice in Chains, like I mean, they were just so different. Sure. So you hear like Even Flow and Jeremy and all that other stuff, and it's yeah. like, and then you hear Black, and just that outro. That outro is awesome it's because intense. it just keeps going yeah. and going, and uh, it's just a really great record that you can still listen to, and it's currently in the brackets. It is. It's, I think so. It's got a fighting chance. I think it's up against Primus. Is it? It'll beat Primus. I hope it beats Primus. <laughs> Yo, Primus took out Gish, Smashing Pumpkins. I have no and idea. It should. Uh, yeah. I'll take Primus People over that. Shitting on Primus, man. Tim Alexander, come on, back me Tim right Herb here. Alexander. Yeah. Well, sorry. <laughs> yeah, but Larry. <laughs> La- shout out to Larry Lalonde again. <laughs> yeah. but, All right, yeah. so uh, number ahead. five, Parker. I did In Excess, Never Tear Us Apart. Oh, that's great. I'm a big In Excess guy. Yeah. Ooh. Big In Excess guy. You... I I always tell my wife that. How can I put this? If 
sex had a voice, it would be him from In Excess. Wow. Because he just sings, and I'm like, my God. Well, with a necktie. Yeah. yeah. Ah, she didn't, she didn't, you went there. And she didn't leave you? No. Nah. I was going to leave myself to go and you know, find him. <laughs> Is she happy that he's gone and can't steal you? <laughs> All right. So, and you want to know what's funny about that? I've been listening to that That's song nonstop song. <clears throat> because we're doing Halloween sets. Mm-hmm. We're doing cover songs for some house party and some shows. And I have to learn that fucking song. I love NXS. Oh, yeah? That's yeah. one of my yeah. all time favorites. What other favorites? Songs? playing there? Uh, cover Me Bad. That's the name of their cover band. Color Me Bad? Cover, cover Me Bad. Oh, I like that. <laughs> um, we're doing like Modern English, okay. Face to Face, All right. Uh, Jawbreaker, Alkaline Trio, all right. a mixture, Billy Idol. Nice. You know. All the favorites. So we're doing some Billy Idol in there. Yeah. Because awesome. you know what it is? Like, the first show we were doing is like a house party that we do like every year. So it's just like, it's fun. It's like a fun atmosphere. And w- once you start playing these songs, like, people just kind of like sure. yeah. do their thing. <laughs> so, uh, okay. So, my number five. Um, like I said, I, I took it from uh, the the approach of like just bands that are no- known for rock songs mm-hmm. that just happen to have this ballad. Okay. Okay, so uh, my number five is um, I Remember You by Skid Row. Mm-hmm. Somebody else picked that, right? You no. probably did. No. no, I didn't actually. Oh, okay. I, I have no Skid Row. Okay, listen, yeah, that, that first fucking record, I could still listen to it to this day. The it's second so record, good. it's great. I can listen to the second record too. Right? Yeah. In a Darkened Room, Quicksand that Jesus. That is killer. Yeah. Wasted yeah. Time, yeah. Riot Act, Definitely. Slave to the Ground. Uh, uh, but the first record had like Can't Stand the Heartache. Big so, Guns. Yeah. Big Sweet guns. little sister. Remember that song? Remember yeah, that song? of course. Yeah. Well, because I, I said that I, I wrote a parody to that when I was younger. That was the first song I wrote. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to say the name. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, num- number five, definitely, I remember you. It's killer. It's goddamn killer. Like, that's, yeah. a, that's a ballad. And to this day, you put it on. And I could sing the verses. I just can't sing that chorus because Sebastian's voice is just, like, ridiculous. Yeah. So... That's my number five. Jeff, number four? All right, my number four, I guess, would be... Well, see, I I, I didn't really put these in order, but... um, right. Neither did I. Okay, you didn't do it either? Yeah. Okay, then I'll pick... Uh, I st- mean, I did, as st- I picked them. <laughs> Stairway to Heaven. Okay. Never heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably how's, band. how's that go? Just turn on BAB. It's the, you know, the third song. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the radio right now. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. That, um, that's epic. I was a Led Zeppelin hater. For a long time. God, this is over. I, I, well, here's the thing. <laughs> Sorry, man. Because, I don't meant to tell you. I was, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> this is why. Because I was just like, you know, growing up, it's like skate culture. It's like you looked at it as like your parents' music. Mm-hmm. But then I grew older and I appreciated yeah. it. I'm like, oh, shit. Sometimes this, your ears aren't ready to hear certain things. It's just not. I wasn't ready to hear jazz for a while. And then yeah. one day it made sense. Like, oh, wow, yeah. these guys are amazing. You know. One day P. Diddy did uh, cover of Cashmere. And I was like, <laughs> that brought you around. <laughs> yeah. And it, and it, it was, was, that it was so guy much better. Into it. <laughs> it was so much P. better. P. Diddy, shout yeah. out. <laughs> I was just kidding about that one. Fuck Godzilla. What did Jimmy Page get paid to stand there next to him act on Saturday Night Live? Probably a lot. A lot. Uh, I hope yeah. it was worth it. That always made me cry. <laughs> yeah, terrible. Totally but yeah, no. Stay Away is the granddaddy. Yeah. Yeah. Of. It's a little uh, obvious, but I had to throw it in. Hey, I mean, you have It to. deserves its mention, yeah. man. Absolutely. Some, some things are just, you know, you got to cement them in. So, yeah. Lang at number four. Number four. All right, I got a lot here. I'm trying to see it through. I'm going to go with um, Skid Row, 18 in Life. Yeah. Ah. It's the uh, other one. Uh, it's, it, it, I love that song. I love the video. Everything about it. That was the one. I like that one better than I Remember You. I don't know why. Probably because it was a little bit more badass. It's a little edgy. Yeah, like you were like, I want to hang out with that kid with the gun. Yeah, you know, like <laughs> I don't, I don't want to get shot. I was like him in that video, you know, with his dad yeah. yelling at him. Yeah. And it's like fuck you, dad. dad. Yeah. He's closing the door, fuck and he went out too. and played with that gun and shot his friend. And wait, well, yeah, I've said too much. <laughs> you know Spoiler I mean? alert. <laughs> He's coming out riverhead. I remember that. a friend of mine. I won't mention his name. Went to went to jail for a while. And his his girlfriend at the time mailed him a cassette single at 18 in life. Wow, that's fucking <laughs> cold, man. Wow, man. He thought it was funny. I would have thought it was funny. I thought it, it was, was funny, pretty, too, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did he listen to it? I don't know if he had a tape player. <laughs> Damn. I think, some what guy, about the I think or- somebody took it from him. Somebody was tatting <laughs> him with it. <laughs> yo, yo, run that shit. <laughs> <laughs> you might have knew him. Oh, uh, yeah? He might have been the same what, time. What year? 
<laughs> I don't know oh, exactly. Okay, yeah. I'm a late 90s guy. Nice. That was yeah. Sam's last time, the, the East yeah. End. Shout out to Riverhead. <laughs> Shout out to Riverhead <laughs> facilities. <laughs> Parker. Number four, Faith No More, Ashes to Ashes. Yeah. yeah. Love me some Faith No More. I don't know that one. Yeah. Oh, that, that's what album is album that? Album of the year. You know what? I'm not familiar with oh, this stuff. Oh, that's a good one. Angel a dust. lot of people, including myself, mm-hmm. bailed d- like during King for a Day, Fool for a Lifetime. Yeah. When they switched guitarists. I went mm. back and listened to the last two records. Yeah. And Those are my two favorites, believe it or not. They were actually really, really good. Like yep. it, yeah. it was one of those things where I just wasn't ready. I, like, I'm like, Jim Martin. Angel like, Dust is so good. I yeah. Be, I was just... Top, and it was just so different, but mm-hmm. like if you are not familiar, like put those on, and they're they're really well written records. I just wasn't ready to hear them. Oh, that band's so good. And let's talk they, about let's talk about Mike again. Borden, man. I mean, Amazing. one of the greats, of course. Forever. Yeah, definitely for forever doing his thing, that dude. So, uh, number four, I have um, Faster Pussycat, House of Pain. Wow. Oh yeah. yeah, that's a banger. Yeah, that's a like. I, their whole catalog kind of sucks, but like bathroom walls, good rocks. I saw them at, you know. at, at Mulcahy's like not too long ago. <laughs> what was that with LA? They Guns, didn't make it right? to Riot Fest. It, <laughs> <laughs> they were on the sixth stage. <laughs> <laughs> were on the stage. On the stage that didn't make it. Mom and mom <laughs> called them in sick. <laughs> so um, uh, we like I had you know I've already said this so but they, they played. Um, and everyone was just waiting for House of Pain, and when they played, we we're like, okay. But they played with L.A. Guns, who I I love. I think their catalog's amazing. Um, but House of Pain is just great, really great song. That if um, they're one of, you know, those bands from like back in the day, like once you get rid of that image, like if you gave House of Pain to a song uh, to a band today that just didn't have that look, they would have a huge hit. It's just that stigma that's attached to that look in that time. That yeah. make people kind of like, if you weren't there, you're just not fucking with it. I think there's a lot of bands that didn't need that whole look, yeah. probably, and they would have just like Cinderella. Yeah, it's just oh, a absolutely. straight up blues rock, blues, yeah, rock yeah. band. But they they yeah. poofed it all up, and then they just get all right. You're just like everything else, you know absolutely. what I mean? But they're better than that, you know. But yeah. they they get attached to that. Yeah, that's it. I remember Ozzy talking about um, I guess you know how everyone was getting lumped in together. You guys probably remember the quote. And he was just like, you know, he's like, uh, now nowadays everyone that's got long hair and looking sweet and pretty is considered, like, metal. Mm-hmm. He's like, but I don't see any dif- any similarities between Poison and Metallica. He's like, at least I hope not. <laughs> 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 so, all right. Yes. Jeff, number three. All right, my number three will be Home Sweet Home, Molly Crew. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. Good one. That I think we, so I think, good. yeah. You get to play that with Nikki at all, a little bit? No. Nah. No. No. That one's on the shelf. That's so good. You know. That's like one of the only piano licks I remember I remember how to play. Yeah. We, we we saw that at the reunion. Oh, you you don't remember that. <laughs> Which <laughs> when we were, we were at the reunion. Oh, we I lost you. Sorry. We were at Madison Square Garden. Remember me, you, and my brother? Yes. Do you remember the end of the show? I do, I do. I don't know if you do. (laughs) 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 Anyway. Yeah, Yeah, they did Home Street Home. uh. Yeah, oh yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You were definitely there. Um, I'm sure, like, do we have that on the list too? Any one of us? Motley Crue? Yeah. No, I don't actually. No. I did. I had it written in there. I figured it would get We're going to leave it out. So yeah, I'm uh, going to let him keep that one. So yeah, I mean, I remember the video too. Yeah. Was played. MTV used to have a thing back when I was a kid, and then like five o'clock, I think it was a total. It wasn't no. total request. No, it was uh, you, you hard the, thirty. You got the call in. Dial and MTV. Vote for your, yeah, dial MTV and Motley Crue, Home Sweet Home was number one for so long they had to retire it. Yeah, because it was for like a year. Yeah, people yeah. like voted for that video. Yeah, and that video is such a good on the road totally. rock video. Totally, it's like one of the best. Yeah, yeah. and it's a really well written song. Very. The well, lyrics. Yeah are pretty good mm-hmm. you know like you hear them and they still connect um, will you sing it for us right now <laughs> I'm a no, I'm a dreamer <laughs> See? I'm a little sick right now I'm sure everyone here knows <laughs> uh, I like Mick Mars' solo on that too I know you're not a big Mick guy but I just you know uh, that solo's good yeah listen don't throw me under the bus <laughs> I'm sorry it's no rattlesnake shake <laughs> nice <laughs> okay um, great choice yeah that would have been my probably number two so 
Langan. Where are we at? Three? Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with... Ozzy Osbourne, Killer of Giants. Mm. From, uh, Look at you, man. Look at you. Yeah, I'm a big Ultimate Sin guy. You're digging in the it's crates. one of my favorite Ozzy records, period. It reminds me of Stefan Ackerman. Dude. Playing that he knew every, be, if it, if it at the beginning. the Variety yes. Show, me and him had that little thing, yes. and that was his, his intro. That was his intro. That was his intro, yeah. But uh, Jakey e. Lee gets slept on so hard. In the big scheme of things, and what a good guitar player he was, yeah. And uh, especially that album, he's so brilliant on it, and he's kind of, you know, falling out of sight a little of bit. Course. I know he's making albums and stuff. I think that there, dude played Revolution like not that long ago. He might. He's got a band. Um, goes yeah. by Red Dragon Cartel or That's something. That's right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. And they had to change singers a couple of times, but I'm a big Jakey e. Lee guy, and, he, and and the intro to that is beautiful. The lyrics are nice, and uh, his solo is great so it was one of my favorite songs from a favorite album he was on uh that metal show yep yeah and stuff so yeah um number three parker oh man number three i did his work gets all weird cheap trick the flame oh no, that's all right i'm a sucker for that yeah, song man. Buddy. you know yeah. i had the flame that's oh like, okay that's but, when they in the 80s right when yeah. they came back yeah. okay yeah. Yeah. i'm a sucker for that yeah, band that's, yeah. that's well, a great, they're a great it is. i mean come on man. Yeah. they're a legendary band they're yeah. still putting out records mm-hmm yeah. So um, I remember being in Queens in like Corona, and this is where I started to love Jordan Ammons. <laughs> my, my <laughs> That's fasc- where your love affair with Jordan Ammons started. Jordan Ammons, right? <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a person. I you, know, you ever go to a wedding? You ever go to a wedding and they give these like candies wrapped up in a little? I can't get <laughs> one hell yeah on a Jordan Ammons. Hell yeah! <laughs> yeah, it's it's um it's like the candy coated almonds. Oh, okay, but I don't know. Listen. It's a big deal to Sam. Yeah. It's a big deal to me. And and um, I, w- I would sit in the movie theater by myself by my grandmother's in Corona. And uh, I would get my Jordan almonds. That's where I first fell in love with them. <laughs> Listen to the flame. Well, they, the, <laughs> Listen they, to the flame and drink Corona. <laughs> they would have eat, eat, well, they would have the same songs every time the movie played. Right. And that's where I heard this, the flame. Like, anytime I went to go see a movie, it was, like, part of, like, whatever the playlist was. So whenever you eat a Jor- Jordan almond, you get a little misty-eyed. Yeah. I think of that song. Absolutely. That's now I know why. I love that All shit. All that time. So. Nice. But, uh, yeah, I, I had the flame, too, but... You know, we could skip it. And um, for me, I'm going to go with number three, uh, Love Song, Tesla. Oh, oh nice. All right, all right, cool. That video, uh, and, and the structure is really weird. Like, if you write songs, you, you know, like, it's not a, a – it's, it's such a weird, like – like, obviously I wasn't writing songs at that time, but, like, the format was, like, so weird, like, the chorus and all that other stuff. Um, but by the end of the song, it was just like, by the time the solo kicked in, mm-hmm. like, it was just like, I was just some fat sold. Spanish kid in Long Island rocking out hard. <laughs> yeah. you know? And maybe I wasn't fat then, but, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Tesla's love song. Fantastic. I think they are one of those bands too that didn't need that look. I think they wrote just great songs. I agree. They didn't fully go all full on yeah, hair. They, they, didn't, no. they didn't go full on. No. no. They, 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 they yeah. dipped that toe. Their, yeah. man, their management probably wanted The singer yeah. had a funky haircut I'll give you that It just wasn't high Yeah, yeah. It was just The drummer weird. was trying to keep it In like the 80s with Troy that, Lucetta with baby Yeah, yeah He had Troy. a weird yeah. Good guitar players too He's They're like brothers a... right The hand I don't think so hand. No No I thought there was two brothers In that band No mm. They Sorry. played Paramount <laughs> Recently <laughs> Or oh, or is I that mean, soon I think they're playing The Paramount soon Because okay. I wanted to go I think it's the 30th Okay same night as quicksand though. I hope but. I can still get tickets. <laughs> that yeah. guy got arrested though. Are they still touring. <sighs> it's a three. That plane is a three piece right well, now. Then I ain't going. Yeah. Yeah. Shop quicksand's at a CVS. Four. Yeah. Quicksand's a fucking four piece. Too. Yeah. Got you. Dude was in handsome man. Yeah, great band. Right. Not in handsome anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So number two, Jeff. My number two. Let's see here. I'll go with um, Goodbye to Romance. Ozzy. Great song. That's a good uh, one. Yeah. That's a banger. Great lick by Randy on that. Definitely. Yeah. So it's like every time you hear it, it's just, you know, I don't know. It's 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 timeless, pretty much. Yeah. So, uh, Langan, number two. Um, let's see. Where am I going with this? The Cure. <laughs> I'm still not going to Cure. I have um, bringing on the heartbreak. That Leopard. Oh, good one. That's a good yeah. one. Uh, Great album. Actually, the Mariah Carey version's better. She did. She, she did. covered that. Song. Did she? When? I'm just kidding. It's not oh, better. Geez. But she did cover it. I gotta, really? I, I gotta swear YouTube to God. that. Someone check, fact check me. Did she remember the lyrics? 
<laughs> it's before she went totally crazy. Someone <laughs> fact check. If only we had a device, we could look that up if that's true. I'm pretty sure she covered that, though. <laughs> All right. But good. anyway, uh, yeah, that was on what, High and Dry? Yep. Um, yeah. Great dynamics in that song. Joe Elliott kills it. Uh, uh, that's like the first time I heard Def Leppard, really. That was still Pete, uh, what's his name? Pete. On gu- oh, what was his name? On guitar, before Steve Clark came on. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Pete Willis? That sounds right. Look that shit up, too, but after yeah. you're done with Mariah Carey. She did. <laughs> she did cover? She did cover. What? Don't yeah. doubt me, motherfuckers. I gotta look. Wow. I gotta look. Um, Recognize Long Damn. Island. When I, spit, <laughs> when I spit some shit, you just believe that shit's it. gonna get me through treadmill on come Monday. Ah. Me and Mariah <laughs> go yeah. back like babies in passive Nice. Every, everybody check that Mariah Carey version. Yeah, out. everyone check. I'll, po- it. I'll make sure I post it to the group. Uh, number two, Parker. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, number two, I did Metallica. Nothing else matters. Right. I know. I know that the Black Album gets you know a, a lot of thumbs down. But I love it. It's so funny Two because like right there. when that came out, I yeah. was like, "No, I don't. I'm not into this." Yeah. So you were with this guy, over right? Here. But now, <laughs> now when I listen to it, yeah. I, I I understand that it's so great. Yeah, it really is. But I, mean, I get was, that. I mean, overproduced as hell. Yeah, but I remember. Uh, oh, but it sounds. Let's do a little, you know, teleport. Yeah. Eighth grade, you know, field trip. I'm sitting in Jones Beach, and we got it playing through the boombox, and then. Sad But True comes on the first time I heard it, and I was Banger. just like, this might be the fucking heaviest song no, I've ever heavy, heard in my man. entire life. It's heavy. That record's you know? great. That yeah. riff, I learned that from Guitar but, World. Yeah. But when it came out, you know, we're going from, like, Injustice for All to yeah. you know, Enter Sandman, and you're a kid, and mm-hmm. you're going like, this is gay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You I, know I, what I mean? I like, already, um, so you figure, like, Injustice came out when I was 10, so I remember one. One was Influential. So I ate up the Black Album because I was like 12 or 13. Right. And then from there, like a few years later, I was like, ah, just like the other records. Yeah. Like, I you went know what it was Justice. for me is it, it, it's like a girlfriend that broke my heart <laughs> when I was a young, <laughs> impressionable kid. Like I had these it's albums. Like for me. And they got mm. so big on their own, their own rules, heavy as shit. And I was like, who is this? And it just, I just couldn't get over it for a while. Now, as a business people and whatever, yeah. that's... Cl- the next step to put them into the biggest band on the planet yeah. and totally makes sense. Yeah, Jeff. And, and, you know, I totally get it, but it it took me a while to get over that. Even now, like it's it's almost like if relating it back to the girlfriend thing. It's like we're we're friends, you know. It's never going to be the same as it used to be. Yeah, <laughs> but we're cool. <laughs> as, as as a listener, like you want them to stay the same, but like obviously being in a band, like you always want to just make the next record better. Yeah, there's certain bands that are like, okay, this is what we do, and that's what it is. But you know, as as a musician, you want to just keep making new yeah. shit. Yeah, and then as a fan, like you're kind of selfish. You're like, oh, I don't want to hear anything past the third album. Right. You but hear me, Bruce Dickinson? <laughs> 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 so. It's true, though, you know? Yeah. But that's the metal fans, too. Yeah. Oh, these guys still playing the same shit over and over again, like Slayer or something. Oh, these guys changed again? Then they don't sound like this. Nobody's ever happy. No one's ever happy. So, too many people. Right. But like, if you go to... They could, they're laughing all the way to the bank, so who gives a shit? If you go to I Great think. Adventures with 20 people and you want to go on one ride, at least two of those guys are not going to want to go on that ride. Yeah. Multiply that by, like, a zillion. Yeah. So... Uh, number two is motherfucking close my eyes forever. Oh, great song! Ozzy and Lita, that shit is a banger. <laughs> that shit is like when it's I first a, saw that. Song. Ozzy was pretty scary. Yeah, and Lita was pretty hot, so it was like a good like Beauty and the Beast type thing going on. I think you know Ozzy was definitely probably in his element. Yeah, um, and just great song. I a really good. Song. I read Lita Ford's book. And uh, she nice. talks about how well Sharon was managing, obviously Ozzy and Lita, and putting them together was really good because that was Ozzy's first uh, hit single, I think, number one single. That was a, yeah, yeah. And uh, and she talks about, and I guess Sharon got mad because she thought they were hooking up or something like that, and they Why fell would you out, think and that? blah blah blah, yeah. and it never happened according to Lita or whatever. But uh, Lita Ford saw Ozzy at a party like a year or two later. And he had no idea who she was. He didn't She's even like, oh I recorded God. that song with you. Your only number one sing. He, he's like, who, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't no. remember it at all, even making it. That's oh, so classic. That's classic. funny. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, if you read books, read that Lita Ford book. Oh, Langan juicy. seems to love it. She so. banked everybody up. Good for her, man. <laughs> Shout out to her. Straight awesome. up. Awesome. Shout Straight out to Hose. Up, yeah. yeah. She stole all the good guitar seed, no. man. Let me tell you. <laughs> right, Succubus. Here, here we go in number one. Uh, top five rock ballads with Jeff Feb. 
number one. Changes, Black Sabbath. Nice. Mm. Oh, great song. Yeah, yep. Definitely. Like Showed this. you how versatile they were, you know? I feel Make like. a song like that. Yeah. Because they're always, you know, rightly so, the Bert, the Godfather's of metal, but, I mean, that's a beautiful ballad. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is. Yeah. And we were talking about, like, evolution just now, you know, like, uh, changing and uh, just, like, the sound, like, trying something different, mm-hmm. and it worked. You know, it's like one of those ballads. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't on you know around back then i'm sure maybe some people didn't like it but like to this day you put that on and it's just like i love that song yeah. people that probably don't even listen to sabbath on a normal basis that's who it reaches yeah and that's the goal you know sure. like people aren't trying to hit diehards well they sabbath are. did so much more besides metal you know yeah like they had so much groove in some of their songs totally and this, I'm bill so, ward yeah yep no another doubt. great one you know they could do anything yeah. back in the day yep but, yeah, right. great song. What do you think of Sabotage? Black Sabbath, Sabotage. <sighs> Sabotage. Um, it's one of the albums I haven't probably given right. as many plays as I should and have. most people c- will say that, and that's... I the, think you told me, like, I should go back and revisit that record. Without a doubt. Right? Yes. Yeah. You were playing that a lot. Did Zach got you into that? Or I know he's well, JD, big, obviously... Well, JD was like, have you listened to this record? You know, I was like, yeah, I've listened to it. He's like, when's the last time you heard it? I was like, I don't know, a long time ago. And then we just started listening to it again, yeah. and I was just like... Wow. You need people like that. Yeah. yeah. And I think we're all people. Go like revisit that. it. Yeah. I think because there's so much music that comes out and now everything's so accessible yeah. that, y- you know, you listen to two songs from that and it's like, oh shit, this came out, this came out, this came out. But you need somebody to be like, yo, when was the last time you heard Sabotage? So right. it's like for fans to keep that thing going, podcasts like this no is question. just like completely. It's like, when was the last time you listened to Black Sabbath Sabotage? Yeah fucking listen to it. Yeah, it makes sense. Because yeah. also, too, like a lot of bands like that, like Sabbath, Zeppelin, Purple, um, obviously I know Smoke on the Water, and I know Highway Star, and I know, but like going back and listen to the deep cuts, or like Zeppelin, Rock and Roll, Stay Away, you've heard, you know all the mm, big ones, mm. Sabbath, Iron Man, Paranoid, but all these deep cuts on these records that kind of yeah. went by the wayside at the beginning. You yeah. find so much new shit in them now, totally. listen to them with mature ears, you know? Totally. Yeah. Scott wants to know if we took 58 or Sound Avenue. Scott Jazombek? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we took Sound Avenue. Sound Ave. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> I pointed out where, where he lived, I told you guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah he's like, the I drove by my shit. So, yeah. <laughs> um, number one, Langan? Number one for me, e- easy. I picked this one, Fly to the Angels by Slaughter. Oh, I love you, man. Oh, yeah. I want it sung at my funeral, Maybe actually. Yo. Blast of lies, baby. Oh, yeah, yeah. Great, Those man. stick twirls go yeah, on for he days. Was, he was a he's cool a, looking drummer, yeah. right? Growing up. Yep. He was a blue man group. Yeah, yeah, yeah he is. Yeah, yeah. Great drummer, yeah. Everybody yeah. ends up there. Tim, <laughs> Tim Alexander did yeah. too, right? Yeah. You either end up painting, on, painting uh, houses or blue man. Yeah, no doubt. Fly to the Angels is... Paint yourself. The chorus on it, the... Oh, you're serious? Yeah. Oh, li- li- look yeah, at his, man. Look at his face. Great look album. How passionate he's about to get. Are Let you him serious? go, dude. That's a great. You don't track. like that song? Really? You don't. You don't like Fly to the Angels? You can't be serious. Give that's him your a, number one. Give him a verse. A heart attack, son. All right. Are you, you crazy? Fly. Okay. Come on. <laughs> I would go with Spend My Life before that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I love that song. I okay. think it, it, it. I love the chorus. I love the way it's sung. Um, <laughs> it's got a. Uh, Michelle Rizzo is so happy right yeah. now. Yeah, no, I it it's it's it if without getting too personal and stuff. When my mom passed, oh, it's got yeah. like a nice, like otherworldly kind of message to gotcha. it. You know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. Um, even before that, though, I did like the song. I liked the way it was put together. Um, and Dana Strum signing uh, Taiketo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dana Strum was in a lot I think of bands. So. No, Maybe but he, he signed. He was in uh, Vinnie Vincent Invasion. He's too. actually oh, nice. in a rock. Uh, <laughs> Are you a Kiss guy? Uh, original Kiss. Okay. Yeah. How far do you go? Sir, a well, carnival that, you, know what, you know what? <laughs> you know what's so suck. funny? When I was growing up, I had Kiss Alive Two on eight track. Okay. And I remember twenty nine. Twenty nine years old. <laughs> <laughs> and move that thing. Yo, he's on. on yeah, yeah, we're we're good. We're yeah. good. Um, and and rock and roll all night, all that obviously. Yeah. Gene mm-hmm. Simmons has got me. You know, Peter Chris's drum kit's got me. And then I kind of. Didn't listen to Kiss for a while. And then as I got older, when I listened to like Cold Gin and all that stuff, I'm like, man, this stuff was cool. Yeah. Old Kiss is funky. It is just great. Yeah. Ace is great. Oh, yeah. How far? They're great. Space Ace. 
how far in the catalog do you do you take it though? Like Creature of the Night, Tears Are Fallen, Sam's favorite, Hot oh, in the dude, Shade. That, that, that's ba- that's <laughs> basketball jersey kiss. <laughs> I don't, go, I, jersey I don't go that far. Yeah, you know, I mean, I would, I would say probably when the makeup came off, I'm yeah. done. Yeah. Okay. What about lick it up though. Yeah, that was it. That was when the makeup. That was lick it up. Yeah, yeah. that was lick it up. I think Creatures turn. of the Night was the last with makeup. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen Vinny Vincent lately? No. He looks like a, a housewife in Nassau County. No, that's awesome. Like working the perfume <laughs> counter at Macy's. I actually have a. It's fucking I, I have terrible. A, no, I have a Japanese <laughs> bootleg, and it's one of the only times that Vinny Vincent actually wore makeup. With he Kiss. was the Ankh. Yes. Right. Yep. And they're playing, it, they're, dude. They're yeah. playing Japan. There's like, I don't know, three million people there. Yeah. It's like the biggest fucking crowd I've ever seen. And Eric Carr was in it, right? Yep. Yeah. Which I loved. Yeah. My favorite drummer out of Kiss. Yeah. So. Yeah, hmm. definitely. I like Bruce Kulick. But back to this though, Fly the Angels is better than all that. Nice. Uh, number one. That, that's tough for me because I do love Slaughter too. <laughs> I can't so. believe you yeah. don't like that song. I thought you liked that song. I love the record. All this time online, the... you've been mocking me. I thought you were down with my <laughs> choice. <laughs> I loved. I just didn't think you would go there, but I love that first record when it first came out. Like to Up me, all like night, sleep every all burning oh, yeah. bridges. Like he didn't think you were going to go that far. Damn. That dude. That dude was like 18 when he made that record. Mark Slaughter. He was maybe, young. Uh, maybe you feel comfortable because you're a mad at Tug. I'm feeling myself here. Yeah, he he's feeling more used to yeah, at going, Jeff's yeah. house where it all outdoor started, interview. Man. You know, yeah. birds are chirping still. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm telling you, I want it sung at my funeral. Okay, that's how. Dead ass serious I am. If I die right now, it's on the record. All right, That's we it. got it, man. If we die in the car on the way back while you're sitting in the back seat, <laughs> like you're scared of, sing that shit. I point, want Jeff to sing I'm it. I'm going to sing At this point, worry. Jeff could play drums. Mark Slaughter is definitely a male. <laughs> <laughs> sure. like, I can't imagine that he would say no. So. Reach out. Someone reach out. Oh. Sorry. Parker That's number my number one. one. Go ahead. Uh, well, funny enough, number one following the, I guess we're back into the hair metal, I chose a band that already got mentioned, but Cinderella Heartbreak Station. That's a great song. Ooh, love yeah. it. Good song. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. love that record yep. and I love that song. I think yeah. it's a once again, it's it's so not like you said hair metal. No. It's not. No, band was so much more. You know, no. I mean and, and when you think of the, the phrase hair metal, like none of those bands were metal. It was just like this no. weird look. But like Heartbreak Station was just like a really cool like yep. rock song. The whole like, piano it intro. Yeah. Yep. It's all John Bon Jovi's fault because he discovered him. He yeah. said Tease that shit up, boys. <laughs> yeah, look pretty for me. Yeah, they showed up and they're like, "What? The, who? What? Did you kid me? Have you seen Tico? Start looking like him." <laughs> Tico Torres. Yeah. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. New Jersey. Tico, do that hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <Tico. laughs> you seen Tico over there? He looking good. Something. Damn, Tico, you looking fun. <laughs> you paint three murals with some of that ass. <laughs> Beastie boys. All right. Uh, so number one. For me, uh, I'm gonna go Danzig Blood and Tears. Mm. That's the best rock wow. ballad of all time. Wow. You can't fuck with that song. That's Better it. than Sistina. Huh? Sistina, yeah, absolutely. I fucked that up. Blood and Tears is <laughs> bl- like everyone I'll always miss says. That on. It's on fucking Lucifuge, the best. God, how do I not? Did he write that, that after he got punched in the face? <laughs> no, th- this was like uh, uh, he, he saw the light. He, <laughs> he probably <laughs> wow. I just got that joke. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, you know what? Guess he's not coming on now. <laughs> <laughs> we had him booked. But uh, Lang, that, was on, t- that was terrible. To he's say. be on the special <laughs> Halloween episode. Nice. We're doing next one. <laughs> yeah, Glenn. Glenn wants Jeff to be the new drummer. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Blood and Tears is just great. It's it's the perfect mixture. And I hate Elvis. I think Elvis is like a fucking karaoke singer. But his voice is great. So to me, this is like a complete, like hard rock Elvis. Mm-hmm. Like that fucking chorus. Love Jim Morrison too. Very much, yeah. you yeah. know. And I love the Doors. People were hating Me on too, the Doors. Me too, man. I don't get that at Scotty all. Scotty C was like, you would have thought Jim Morrison kicked his dog or some you shit. Crazy. <laughs> if you don't get the Doors, I don't know what to tell you. I'm sorry. More than any of the other ones. Yeah. You know, they wrote great songs. Fuck yeah, they were talented. Like you hear hell. Break on Through? How are you gonna hate on Break on Through? There was so much stuff, and John Densmore, obviously yeah. great. Yep. Jazz influence and shit. They brought so many styles together, but, but I digress. You know. I'm Shout out to Val those. Kilmer. Shout out to the Farfisa organ. So yeah, <laughs> right, that's yeah. it. Number one, blood and tears, and thanks. Yeah, that's it. Another episode, episode twenty-one. Uh, next episode, we're gonna get Joe Rubino from Tension and Ice Cold Killers, um, and all that other shit. I know I said it last episode, but you know, scheduling be like that. Yeah.
Um, that's it, man. Jeff, thanks for doing this. Yeah. You don't want to shake my hand. Yeah, nah, I'm, I'm very. No. Sick. I'm not. He's got the plague. Yeah. I have like I'm five days in, but I think I'm fine. Yo, when he's at Riot Fest, he licked the porta potty hand. <laughs> Is that what happened? Mm-hmm. Yes, I I kerplunked all over myself. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> So but, he got bit by the monkey from Outbreak. Yeah. So, yeah. so <laughs> definitely, uh, yeah. if, if you're listening and you want to check out a show, Black Label's going to be on tour after they make the record. Check them out. Record's and, done. It's coming out. We're going to be out on tour December 26th on. So, so yeah. when are you going to be in New York? I'm not sure. You got to tell me right away so I can stay yeah. so yeah. sit right uh, now. I'll tell okay. you. <laughs> he, you. We need we need his like feet imprint on. I the got floor. my calendar right here. <laughs> yeah, if yeah, you yeah. want to go over. Yeah, you see the you plan. see him. He's ready to write it down. <laughs> so. All right, man. This, this has been awesome. Thank you so much. Later. I can ride the bus, right? No.